error back propagation. So the goal here is to find an efficient method to compute the gradients for gradient descent optimization. Previously, we saw how numerically computing the gradient um, can help us do gradient descent optimization and find the set of neural network connections that have our network learn. Now we're going to use calculus to do the same thing. So we can apply gradient descent on a multi-layer network using chain rule to calculate the gradients of the error with respect to deeper connection weights and biases. So let's start out by considering this network. Um, it's three inputs, four hidden layers, uh, four hidden neurons, and then some outputs. So just to label some of these, let's call these um, these input currents alphas, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four. And then up here, we'll call these beta one and beta two. Now, the outputs are compared to the targets using the, uh, the loss function E, which could, which could be whatever. Okay, alpha i is the input current to hidden node i. Beta j is the input current to hidden, sorry, output node j. And our cost or loss function, we're going to use e. Okay, so for learning purposes, let's focus on finding the derivative or the gradient, the derivative of the um, loss with respect to m41. So m41 is the it's going from the fourth hidden to the first output node. So that's the connection we want to find um, the, the derivative with respect to. Okay, so for example, um, di e, di m for one, let me, it's kind of sloppy, can be written di e, by, now let me, before I continue on, let me draw a picture here. So the output, uh, the, the loss depends on y, and y depends on beta, and beta depends on the other stuff below it. So let's represent that as a, a dependency graph or a computational graph, an expression graph. We have the, uh, the loss function up here, which depends on y1 and y2. And y1 depends on beta1 through sigma, likewise for y2. Now beta1 depends on all four of those h's and, and the four weights, m's. So I'm going to focus on the m's right now. So m11, m from uh, two to one, m from three to one, whoops, and m from four to one. And likewise over here, m from one to two, m from two to two, m from three to two, m from four to two. Okay, now what I want is the derivative of e with respect to m41. Now, I'm going to have to traverse down through this tree and take the derivatives as I go down. Now, I'm going to um, routinely use, uh, break it up into pieces, um, stopping at the input currents. So I'm going to uh, compose the full derivative with these two pieces. So di e by di beta one times di beta one by di m Four one. Okay, so now let's put those two pieces together. So recall the error equals now replacing y with what uh, how we compute it. It's the hidden um, it's the hidden layer um, times the weight matrix plus the bias run through the activation function and then the target. So this is basically just y. So di e by di beta one, uh, so by d, the beta one is in here, or at least that's the, the one of those components is beta one. So therefore di e 
by di beta one is equal to di e by di y one times dy one by d beta one. So again, that's basically just putting those two pieces together. Okay, so we'll revisit this piece later, but I'm gonna put a block or a box around it because we'll come back to it and we'll we'll reuse that. Okay, but what I'm after is di e by di m41. So di e by di beta one times di beta one times di m41. Now, whoops, now recall what beta one equals. It's the sum, let's see, beta one. <clears throat> beta one is uh, the sum from all four of these nodes here, the weighted input current. So I, oops, that's the sum from I equals one to four of H I times M I one, and then plus bias for um, no, B one, not B I. And so then taking the derivative, of beta one with respect to m41 basically strips out the one element of that term or only depends on one element of that term the the first one and sorry the fourth one so it'll be h4 so therefore di e by di m41 is di e by di beta one times h four. So that's just a demonstration of chain rule, and using the um, using these input currents as sort of um, sort of milestones in the chain. Okay, that works for the connection weights between the top two layers. What about the connection weights deeper down in the network? So let's do some of those. So here's that network again. Now let's suppose, um, let's, let's uh, draw the dependency plot for this one, or dependency graph for this one. E, I'm gonna draw it wider this time. Uh, erase, okay. Y1, beta one, Y2, beta two, Depends on sigma. Now, each of those betas, below I, I drew four um, branches down to the different m's. This time I'm going to draw four branches down to the h's. And now we should keep in mind that both betas depend on all four h's. So I'm going to write all four h's down here, h1, h2, h3, h4. Whoops, that's a four. h4. Okay, and so each of these depends on each of those. In addition, the weights um, of those connections are the uh, connection weights, the M's. Okay, so for example, let's look at W21. So we wanna compute the gradient of the loss with respect to W21. That's the weight going from x2 to alpha 1, w21. Now let's put some um, num some dimensions down here just to make our lives a bit easier. Let's call this R capital X. We'll call this R H, H capital H hidden nodes, capital R Y, capital Y output nodes. In this, in our, so that we can be more general later on. But for now, um, will be will stay a little bit more concrete. Okay. Now we want to get down to that w21. We're going to have to go through those hidden nodes down uh, through the alphas as well, because ultimately we want this uh, dependency graph to reach all the way down to w21. Okay. So each each of those h's 
depends on alpha. So just like we had up here, the y's depend on beta, the each uh, h depends on alpha. Now each alpha depends on the input current, the, 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 the weighted output from the x nodes. So I'm only going to draw three, uh, the three connections for alpha 1, but this, th there would be three branches on the other alphas as well. So the alpha 1 depends on W11, W21, W31. So now we've worked our way all the way down to W21, which was what we were after. So we want to compute the gradient or derivative of E with respect to W21. Now again, we're going to use the input currents as the milestones um, to go part way. Now I'm sort of giving you a preview because um, we've got two different betas and we're going to use them both. Okay, so one step at a time. First of all, let's imagine we're getting down to this, oh, that was erase, down to this alpha. So di E by di W21 can be written di E by di alpha 1 times di alpha 1. Ah, you're right. This thing keeps wanting to put it in eraser mode. Di alpha 1 by di W21. Now recall that, uh, so let's work on this part here. That is, so alpha 1 is the sum for j equals 1 to 3 of x, j, w, j, 1 plus a, 1. a, 1 is just the, uh, I didn't really define it, but it's just the bias for the first hidden node. So therefore, di alpha 1 by di w2 1, again, just depends on the, the one term in that sum where the index j is 2. So it's w, uh, w2 1, so what we're taking the derivative with respect to, so we get x2. Okay, so we'll, we'll use that later. Now let's focus on this part here di e by di alpha 1. So we can write that as di e by di h1, right? We can stop there, and then dh1 by d alpha 1, di e by di h1 times dh1 by d alpha 1. Great. Now here's where the first sort of uh, tricky part comes. It's not that tricky really, but going from e down to h, um, I just uh, gestured with the uh, the cursor, which I'm sure you can't see. Going from e to h, there are actually two paths. There's this path through beta one, and then there's this path through beta two. Okay, so we're actually add up both of those, and. Uh, the derivative of e with respect to h1 will be the sum of the two different paths. Okay, so di e by di h1 can be written di e by, oops, that's messy, di e by di beta 1 times di beta 1 by di h1 plus di e by di beta 2 times di beta 2 by di h2, all that times dh1 by d alpha 1. Now, what is di beta 1 by di h1? Di beta 1 by di h1, it's basically 
just this um, weight here, which is um, M11. While we're up here, we're going to be using uh, this other, um, we're going to need di beta 2 by di H1 as well. What's that? That's M12. Okay, so I can rewrite this thing as di E by di beta 1 times M11 plus di E by di beta 2 times M12. Two, no, one, two, right? One, two, yes. All that times dH1 by d alpha 1. Okay. Now, if we were going through backprop, we would have computed these things already, because these gradients were used to compute the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights in the top layer already. So let's assume that we already know th those. Whoops, these already. Okay. So then we can rewrite all that stuff up there as a dot product. Di e by di beta one di e by di beta 2, putting those two in a vector, dotted with m11, m12 again as a vector, and that dot product turns into a scalar multiplied by dh1 by d alpha 1. Okay, so that's the pattern. And this pattern will be repeated. I'll generalize it. In fact, let's generalize it now. More generally, and not just that little network that has three inputs, four hidden, and, and two output, but let's go back to this having capital X inputs, capital H hidden nodes, capital Y outputs. So in this case, um, keep in mind that M is mapping from the hidden to the output. Okay. Now, di E by di alpha I, following the same pattern that we had up above, would be dHi by d alpha i times this dot product, di e by di beta 1, di e by di beta capital Y, because there are y outputs, dotted with m um, i 1, m i y. Basically up here, i was equal to one, okay. So now this thing I'll point out is the ith row of m. Okay, now I'm gonna rewrite that dot product as a matrix or a vec as, as a matrix type product. So d h i by d alpha i, just copy that, keeping this as a row, now turning that, instead of doing a dot product, we're going to have a row times a column, so putting those m's in the column now, m i 1 all the way down to m i capital Y. So now this is the ith column of m transpose. Okay. Now that's just to compute the, the gradient with respect to one of the alphas. If we want to do all of the alphas, it's basically the same process over and over again, but we just lay them all in in a big row. And so what that's going to do is um, cause us to use not just this one column, but we'll have multiple columns, one column for each alpha that we want. Okay, because remember the alpha in up here was indexed i, and so was this column was indexed i. The beta stuff didn't have any index in it, they were just reused. 
Okay, so now we're going to add a column there for each alpha. And notice also that this h dhi by d alpha i is also indexed. So we're going to have um, one of those as well. Uh, one, one of those per formula, I guess. So let me just write it out. d h1 by d alpha 1 all the way to d h h capital H by d alpha capital H. Okay, because we have capital H hidden nodes. Times. I'm going to leave a little space here because I'm going to put a special operator in there. Now, di e by di beta 1 all the way to di e by di beta capital Y times m11 all the way down to m1y, right, over to the h column, h1. M, oops, that's an H there. M H one, M H Y. So <clears throat> in between here, so what we have here now is this thing over here on the right turns into a row vector. And here we have a row vector. Our intention is to take those two row vectors and just get another row vector out of it by doing element by element multiplication, right? It's like I have a row vector here and another row vector. I just want to multiply them element by element to get another row vector. So that operation is called the Hadamard, Hadamard product. And we usually represent it as a dot with a circle around it. So now, um, let's see, we can represent the entire operation, this thing here now is the gradient with respect to alpha of the loss, is dh by d alpha. Now that's a, a vector because we have many h's, each paired with one alpha. Hadamard times, this thing here is the gradient of the error or the loss with respect to beta. And then this thing over here is M transpose. Joke time. Roses are red, violets are blue. Most poems rhyme, and this one does not. <laughs> okay. The most general version now. <clears throat> now we're, we're saying not just um, the a three layer network, but it could be any number of layers. And we're only going to focus on going from layer L plus one to layer L. Or I guess from your perspective, from layer L plus one down to layer L. Okay, so now suppose now I've drawn a picture here and um, you see I've, I've represented the connection weights and the input currents and the different layers and the activities with the H's. The activities are H's, the input currents are L's and the superscript in brackets represents the layer. Now suppose we have the gradient of the loss with respect to the input current to layer L plus one. So that's this thing here. Well, that's that's the input current, and this is the gradient that we're going to assume that we have, and we're going to, from it, derive this gradient one layer down. Okay, um, sometimes you'll see that written di e by di z L plus one, but I'm trying to move towards the uh, nabla notation. Okay, now remember that H L plus one is basically the in input current put through the activation function, and the input current itself is computed using the connection weights and then adding the biases. Oh, this is backwards. Let me change that to H L times W L because H is assumed to be a row matrix, a row vector. Okay. So just like we, just like the formula up above, the formula in this context would be, uh, let's do it in red, D H L by D Z 
L. So instead of alpha, we're using Z, just a different letter, times. The gradient with respect to Z, L plus 1, times the weight matrix. So what we're doing is we have to go from this Z through the weights and then through the activation function to get to these Zs. So this thing here is the activation function that we're going through. And this thing here is the weights that we have to go through. So W L transpose. Okay. Now, once we have that, we can compute derivatives with respect to the individual weights. So let's say we want to um, use this gradient to compute the derivative with respect to one of the weights in here. Okay, so we've uh, we've already shown one of the fundamental equations going down a layer, uh, pushing the gradient down a layer. Now we'll show how using that gradient at a layer can give you the gradient with respect to the weights. Okay. So di we're going to focus on one weight first of all, and then we'll open up to uh, more generally. So weight ij, it's going from um, h sub i to z sub j. So di e by di z sub j at layer l plus 1 times di z j at layer l plus 1 by di w i j at layer l. Okay, I'll just rewrite this first part, di e by di z j layer l plus 1. Now what is this thing here? Well, the connection weight, uh, sorry, the derivative of the input current with respect to the weight is just the corresponding uh, activity from the layer below. You can convince yourself of that. So um, I can rewrite that then as di e by di w i j at layer l is, I'll write it in this order, h i layer l times di e by di z j layer l plus 1. Now there's an i here and a j here, but there's no mixing between them. Right? There's no entity in here that has both an i and a j. So this can actually be written fairly simply as uh, for all the elements by just picking out the, the h i that we want and the z j that we want and multiplying those two. They don't, um, they don't mix beyond that. So one way to, to do that is like this. So let's say I've got a column of all the h's. And I put all these derivatives of with the e's in a row. So this is the gradient with respect to z l plus 1 of e. This here is now, it's not, a, it's not an inner product, it's not a dot product, because a dot product is a row times a column. This is the opposite. This is a column times a row. What you get out of that is a whole matrix. Outer product. And so what we'd get is a matrix that's the same size as our weight matrix W. Our WL in this case. Okay, so the final graphical summary, it just it's just drawn a slightly different way. Again, let's assume that we have the gradient of the loss with respect to z l plus 1. So suppose we've got the gradient with respect to z l plus 1 of e, and we want to compute this gradient down here, as well as the we want to compute the derivative of the error with respect to those weights. So the equations, the two important equations for backprop are these. The first one is the, the pushing it down one layer, going from the gradient uh, with respect to input current one layer 
to the gradient with respect to the input current of the layer below. So to do that, again, we have to go through the weights and then through the activation function. Okay, so going through the activation function, we can write it like this. All right, it's a derivative of the activation function. Hadamard times the gradient from above times the weight matrix transposed. Now, using the gradient above to compute the derivative with respect to the weights um, is done using the transpose. Remember, h is, is by default a row vector in this offering. So we want to turn that row vector into a column times the gradient from above as a row vector. Those are the two basic equations for backprop. One takes the, the gradient with respect to the input current from one layer to the gradient with respect to the input current of the layer below, and the other uses the gradient with respect to the input current to give you the gradient with respect to the, the weights and biases. This is error backpropagation.